Episode 4, Brackenside. Public outcry at the suffragette hunger strikes led to the government passing what became known as the Cat and Mouse Act. Hunger strikers were released from prison when their physical condition deteriorated to such an extent that they were at risk of death. Once recovered, they were re-arrested and the process began again. Several prominent suffragettes lived in the small village of Peaslake in Surrey. One cottage in particular became a refuge for recovering protesters. So, what do we have here then? They've been outside painting all morning. Painting? Painting what? I don't know, sir. Trees. That sort of thing. Right. Any sight of our quarry? I believe she's still inside. Sure of that, are you? Well, she hasn't left the house and we've got men all around the place. Excellent. Then today's the day. Ouch! Are you alright? Scratched myself with a needle. Dangerous work, this banner making. I'm prepared to risk it for the cause. Indeed. What do you think? Very good. I particularly like the red. Yes, most striking. Votes for women, succinct and to the point. Make it loud, make it proud. I'm just worried it's a bit big. It covers the whole table and half the floor. It'll be fine when it's strung up between two bean poles. Don't you worry. Look at you, full of the joys of spring. I must say, you're looking very well today. I feel well, for the first time in weeks. Perhaps you should go outside this afternoon. I understand Georgina is giving some kind of class. Not sure it's such a good idea, though. Don't want to be spotted by the boys in blue, do I? Spotted? What are you talking about? Apparently they're all around the woods. Margaret caught one in the hydrangea yesterday afternoon. In the hydrangea? He was hiding behind it, if you can believe that. Had a pair of binoculars with him. Goodness. Margaret asked him what he thought he was doing, and he told her he was an ornithologist. Yes, and we all know which particular species he's interested in, don't we? The lesser spotted suffragette, in all her glory. Good morning, girls. I must say that's looking wonderful. Yes, we're rather pleased with it. Or well, keep up the good work. That'll come in useful for Thursday's fundraiser. I understand we're under siege, Hilda. Ah, yes. Horrible business. Don't know what they're going to pop up next. I was thinking it might be a good idea for me to stay indoors a while, don't you think? Yes, it's been a number of weeks, hasn't it? I should imagine your time has run out. Long overdue, I should say. Well, it doesn't mean we have to give you up without a fight, does it? And we won't, I can assure you. That's very good, Martha. I particularly like the way you caught the spire of the church. Well, it's a little wonky, but you get the idea. I think it's rather wonderful. I also like the way the path moves up into the woodland. Yes, it's quite mysterious. Catherine, that's very good indeed. Do you think so? Looks a bit wishy-washy. You just need a little ochre. There, look. Oh yes, quite captures the sunlight on the bank. Marvellous. Now, what if you were to... I say! What is it? There's a man emerging from that hedge. What? Where? Over there, by the sty. Good gracious, you're right. They're coming this way. They are indeed. Mother! Mother! It's the police. Well, what do we do? Under the banner. But he'll... Just do it. Quickly. Inspector, how delightful to see you. I see you've brought some friends. Good morning, Mrs Brackenbury. Do you mind if we come in? Do I have a choice? Not really. No. In we go, lads. We are here for Miss Lucy Graham. Oh, really? And I thought you were here to discuss the finer points of our shrubbery. I beg your pardon, madam. I understand one of your men was found in our hydrangea bush. Perhaps he has some gardening tips he'd like to offer. We don't like this any more than you do. Is Miss Graham here? See for yourself. Check upstairs. Right you are, sir. What's all this, then? It is a banner for the forthcoming march. A march? You should be ashamed of yourselves. Parading about the streets like socialists will not achieve anything. On the contrary, Inspector... We are already achieving a great deal. More women are joining our cause every day. And what about you, miss? You're happy to be part of this nest of revolutionaries, are you? I have never been more proud of anything in my life. But to act in such a way, to debase yourselves, to starve yourselves, can't you see the folly? The only folly is to perpetuate a society that is unequal in every respect. Men and women are born unequal, and so they should remain. It is men who govern, men who fight the wars. Yes, sir. And as Queen Elizabeth I said, it is women who invariably win them. She's not upstairs, sir. Where is she, Mrs Brackenbury? I have no idea. Perhaps she's taken a stroll. 
We know she has not taken a stroll. We have the house under observation. Oh yes, of course, the gentleman in the shrubbery. Not to mention the one behind the sweet peas and the fellow in the beech tree. We are just doing our job, madam. And we are just doing ours. Ensuring a just society for the generations to come. You must see that, Inspector. I don't see anything, Mrs Brackenbury. How true. How very true. And what's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Nothing at all. Perhaps you went out the back, sir. Well, I want your opinion. I'll give it to you, Constable. Votes for women, indeed. Nothing more than empty slogans. Well, I tell you, Mrs Brackenbury, you cannot hide behind such things. Can you not? We will find you out. We will follow the law. For that is all we have to separate us from the beasts. And if the law itself is a beast? I'll pretend I didn't hear that. We'll be back, Mrs Brackenbury. You can tell Miss Graham that a nice warm cell awaits her in Holloway. Come on, perhaps she slipped out the back. He's gone. Did he really just say that? Say what? You cannot hide behind such things. He really did. Well, it appears he was wrong about that, wasn't he? Yes, it rather appears he was. In episode four of Brackenside, the narrator was Jess Hudson Pope. Hawkins was played by Max Proughton. The officer by Sam Seward. Lucy by Catherine Cheng. Melissa by Lilia Duba. Hilda by Lizzie Solman. Georgina by Eleanor Milne. Martha by Pippa Rossler. And Catherine by Hannah Jardine Roberts.